Hi, this is example number one from chapter uh, 18. Is, this is a section 18.4. So let's see. We have here uh, 50 kilograms. Let me write it down. So this is a 50 kilograms wheel that is subjected to a force of uh, 50 newtons. And that force is along that rod right here. So as you remember, the forces are sliding vectors. So that's about the same as applying the force in the center of the wheel. And the, the radius of duration of that wheel is 0 0.3 meters over the point O, which is the center of mass of the wheel. The other piece of information that I've given us is that it's rolling without slipping. That's a very important piece of information. And then we uh, are being asked to find the angular velocity of the wheel after it has rotated 10 revolutions. The, the wheel starts from rest. So you have to always think what will be the best approach to solve one problem. And since we are here are involving forces, we are involving displacement. The revolution implies a displacement of that center of mass. And we are um, implying velocities where one good approach will be the principle of work and energy. The principle of work and energy relates displacement, forces, and velocity. So I'm going to write here the principle of work and energy. And as you recall, there are several ways to write it. The way I like to write it is that the work done by non-conservative forces from 1 to 2 is equal to the total energy in the second position. That means the kinetic energy plus the potential energy minus the total energy in the first position. So the change in energy will be equal to the work done by the for applied forces. So we have to calculate each of those terms. So I'm going to start the work done by that force. So the definition of work in between the position 1 and 2 is the integral from position 1 to position 2 of the dot product of the forces and the displacement. Say I'm going to slide the force to point O. That will be then integral between 0 and whatever the point O has displaced is 2. And the force in the direction of the displacement. So it will be force cosine of 30 degrees times, now I can write that displacement on that point O, right? So the force is constant. So we care about the dis that displacement. So we can say this is 50 cosine of 30. And what will be the displacement of the point O it starts in 0 to that final displacement? If I have 10 revolutions, you can imagine that any time I uh, do a revolution, that point covers the perimeter of that wheel. So that displacement 2, S2, is equal to 10 times 2 pi r. That's the work done then by that force. Now, now let's calculate the energy. So the potential energy, as we see, we have the only force that will produce work is the uh, weight. Because if we do a free body diagram just to see the forces that are involved in our system, We have the weight, and we have the normal force at this point of contact, let's call it A, and then we have the friction force. As you remember, that friction force is not related to the normal force because it's less, because we are talking about uh, rolling without slipping. So that those two forces are independent. But in any case, this point doesn't have any displacement because since it's rolling, that force does do not work. When we have slipping, then we, it's another problem. But when we have rolling without slipping, that uh, friction force do not work. 
So, and we have the weight, which we could, we could consider it as a potential, but since in all the displacements of that wheel, center of mass of our wheel doesn't go up or down, and if this is our datum or level of reference, that doesn't change. So we can say that the potential energy in one is zero and the potential energy in two is also zero. We included the potential energy, the springs, and the weight, and we don't have any spring here. And the kinetic energy, we have a T1, they tell us that the will stand, start from rest. So we do not have any kinetic energy at the beginning of our motion, and then we have to calculate the kinetic energy at the end of our motion. For um, a rigid body, we have to include the velocity of our center of mass, that in this case we call it O square, and then we have to also include the effect of the mass distribution of the mass uh, outside that point, which is given by the mass moment of inertia. So it will be mass moment of inertia about that point O and the rotation of that wheel. So, and since this is rolling without slipping, we know that the velocity O is related with the uh, angular velocity as angular velocity times r. So those two represent one only one variable. So now we can compose our equation by substituting all our variables and then we say that the work done by the force, cosine of 30 I will substitute by square root of 3 over 2, times the displacement which I said is 10 to pi r and r is equal to, they give us the radius of the wheel, is 0 0.4, let me write it right here, 0 0.4 meters, so that's 0 0.4, is equal to t, t2, we have it right here, v2 is 0, uh, or the potential energy, the potential, so those, let me write here which ones are 0, we already said this is 0, this is 0, and this is 0. So that question is equal only to the kinetic energy in the second position. So it's one half the mass that is given, 50 kilograms, times the velocity O, that I'm going to write it as angular velocity times R, which is 0 0.4, plus is one half moment of inertia, let me give myself a little bit more space. So, and the moment of inertia, we know that we can calculate it given the radius of duration, which is a radius of duration squared times mass, which is 0 0.3 times the mass, which is 50 meters. So, if we substitute that in here, we have only one equation but we have only one unknown. Solving for angular velocity, I'm going to give you the value of all these equations. So I got the equation on 88 equals to 6.25 uh, velocity square, and that gives me the value of equals to 13.2 radians over a second. And that's the solution of what we were asked to find.